Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. I want to make sure that this is up properly before I continue. Okay, it is up. Praise the Lord. Uh, praise the Lord, everyone. Um, let me see. I think I'm sideways. <laughs> okay, there we go. Better? Okay. Praise the Lord, everyone. Um, my name is Sister Ariana Anderson, and um, I am going to be doing the midday motivation for this uh, for this afternoon. Um, I pray that everyone is doing well. Everyone is blessed. Um, um, let us go ahead and go before the Lord in prayer. Okay. <laughs> let us go ahead be, um, and go before the Lord in prayer before we go ahead and begin um, today's lesson. Um, Father, we give you honor, we give you uh, glory, and we give you praise for this moment, this time. Uh, we ask that you would just bless this experience, bless this time, bless the lesson, God. Um, uh, just um, be in the midst of this moment, and we just give you praise for your word, um, for our testimonies, for our experiences, and how they can encourage and uplift your people. Um, I pray, Lord, that you would just bring, pre bring peace and bring joy and um, some comfort um, to your people um, as we continue on with this lesson. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, it, Hello, everyone. Um, so again, my name is Sister Ariana Anderson, and I am going to be doing uh, today's lesson. Um, our bishop, Bishop Shishan Tyson, um, asked me to come on here and just speak to everyone uh, very quickly today um, concerning my testimony, uh, the things that um, I've kind of gone through over the past um, couple months, and also just to kind of bring an encouraging word to everyone um, due to my own personal experiences. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Um, today's lesson, I would like to, if I could have a topic of sorts, I would like to speak from the topic of, um, while you're waiting, keep obeying. Um, while you're waiting, keep obeying. Type that in the comment box for me, if you will. Uh, while you're waiting, keep obeying obeying and um if i could pull some scriptural reference i'm going to read a couple scriptures for you um, that kind of give us a little bit of perspective on today's topic um i'm going to be coming out of genesis chapter 6 um, and a little bit out of chapter 7 as well um, along with habakkuk uh, chapter 2 verse number 3 um in genesis chapter 6 uh, and we're going to start with verse number 6 um, and it says, and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. Um, verse seven. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing um, and the fowls of the air. For it repented me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, these are the generations of Noah, and it begins to talk about uh, his children. And then as we continue um, on to verse 12, it said, And God looked upon the earth, and beheld it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shalt pitch it within and without, um, with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be three hundred cubits, the breadth of it fifty cubits, and the height of it thirty cubits. Um, and it says in verse sixteen, a window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof with lower second and third stories shalt thou make it. And behold, I even I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth shall die. And then, if we go down to chapter 6, verse 22, it says, Thus did Noah, according to all that God had commanded him, so did he. And then I'm going to jump um, over to Genesis chapter 7. Um, and the Bible says in verse number 5, And Noah did according unto all that the Lord had commanded him. 
And then verse 6 says, And Noah was 600 years old when the floods of waters was upon the earth. Um, and then I'm going to read very quickly Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3. And it says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry so again we're speaking from the subject today um of while you're waiting keep obeying uh now i find it interesting in genesis chapter number six um that noah was given very specific instructions as to what the ark was supposed to look like um, he was told how many stories were supposed to be in the ark, that there were windows that were supposed to be in the ark. Um, he was told that the animals were supposed to come in the ark, um, how long it was going to be, how high it was going to be, how wide it was going to be. Um, God uh, gives very, very uh, specific instructions to Noah. And this is parallel to our lives. It's interesting to me when a lot of people, they pray and they say, I don't know what God is saying or I don't know uh, what what God is speaking um, right now or God isn't telling me what to do. Um, God rarely leaves us in a state where we don't have understanding as to what way we are supposed to be walking and how he wants things done. Uh, God is a God of decency and order. Uh, he's a God of structure. He is not chaotic. He is not all over the place. So oftentimes when he gives us an instruction, he gives us all the instructions. Uh, he will let us know exactly what it is that we need to do. So there are a lot of times where we have to walk by faith and not by sight and just continue to go. But most times God will say, go here. And we take a step and then God will say, go here. And then we take a step or God will say, do this this way. And then we begin to progress. Uh, it is only through obedience that we are able to see the promises of God begin to come to fruition in our lives because what would have happened because in chapter 7 it says that um that Noah was 600 years old when the flood waters began to rise on the earth so what would have happened and we don't know how long it took Noah to to build this ark uh, the bible tells us that it was him uh his children his wife and their uh significant others that were in his close family that were uh inadvertently saved uh when the uh when the floods happened um so we know that he had about 10 or 12 close people uh, to him when he was given this instruction. Uh, what we don't know is how long it took to make the ark. But let's say, let's say it took 50 years to create this ark. What if Noah, in the middle of building an ark, said to himself, you know, I've never seen rain. I don't know what rain looks like. I don't know what a flood is. And I definitely don't know what an ark is. Uh, I don't know how to build this thing. I've never built anything in my entire life. Uh, so I'm going to stop. So what happens if in year number 599, Noah says, I'm done. I'm not going to build anymore. I, I, this is taking too long. I don't see any progress. I don't see any difference. I don't see any change. So I'm done. What happens if Noah stops building? And then when he turns 600 years old, the flood comes. Noah received the instruction, but how would Noah have felt if he received the instruction, did not obey God, and ended up missing his blessing, his salvation, his next move because he doubted um, his circumstance or his situation or couldn't clearly see the future? And honestly, this is where a lot of us are, especially in regards to this pandemic. This is a situation and a circumstance that we have never seen before. We have no idea uh, how to maneuver through a pandemic because we've never been through one before. Uh, we have no idea what our new normal is supposed to look like. Um, I do believe in my heart of hearts that there is an after this, that there is uh, something else that is supposed to come um, at the end of quarantine at the end of pandemic uh, but while we're in the midst of waiting uh, for our situation to shift um, I, I truly believe that what God is saying for us right now is do not 
stop obeying the last instruction that I gave you because of what it looks like right now. No one could have easily said, you know what, there's violence in the land, there's lasciviousness in the land, I have no idea what's going on, I don't know how I'm going to come out of this situation, I don't know how this situation is going to turn around uh, for my good, for my bad, I don't know what's going to come of this. Um, and so I'm going to stop being obedient to the instruction I was given because it doesn't make sense. And I'm going to do what I feel like is necessary to survive in this moment. Or I'm going to do what I feel like is going to be most beneficial for my family and I. And if, if he had done that, again, he would have missed out on the promise and on the blessing that God had given him. Um, as I mentioned before, um, Bishop Tyson had asked me to come on here and just to kind of share a little bit of my experiences um, and a little bit of my testimony concerning um, what's been going on in my life uh, recently. Um, and so I will definitely I will definitely do that um, and, and, and kind of bring this thing a little bit more full circle. Um, I came back home from undergrad uh, to Indianapolis, Indiana um, in 2016 and I started law school. Um, I, and um, I was in prayer about what law school I should go to, uh, what uh, what I needed to do to further my career. And I felt God telling me, you know, I want you to go to this law school at this time. And, and this is the instruction I'm giving you. This is what I want for you. So I said, okay, Lord, I'm going to go. So I went to law school with the idea that because God had told me to go, it was going to be easy. Or because God had told me to go, I was going to automatically be successful. Because why would God tell me to do this if it was going to be difficult? But that's exactly what happened. I got into law school and I struggled. Um, I was used to being one of the top people in my class. Um, and I wasn't the top dog anymore. Um, I was used to um, different things coming to me more easily. And law school was hard. Um, I was um, I struggled a lot with self-doubt and sense of self-worth. Um, I struggled. I just struggled all over. Um, I had professors who told me maybe this isn't the right profession for you uh, to try and pursue. Maybe you should consider uh, doing something else in your career. Um, and so I think that you should quit. And so I began to believe them. I began to think, you know, if God had really called me to this, then, yeah, I should be doing way better than what I'm doing. Um, and I began to kind of doubt. But uh, in July of 2019, God brought me all the way through that process. And I was able to graduate from law school. And I was so excited. It was a big moment for my family. Um, I was the first to, uh, you know, achieve uh, this this level of academia. So I was excited. It was a win for all of us. And so uh, in the middle of that, I was like, okay, God brought me through law school. So that means that taking this bar exam, and going through this next step and, and becoming a licensed attorney, it's going to be easy because God said it and, and it's going to work out just fine for me. And so I studied and I prepared myself for the July bar exam. And I sat for the July bar exam, got my results back, and I failed. And I was devastated. And everyone around me who was in my close circle from law school passed that bar exam, except for me. And so while all of my friends were celebrating becoming attorneys, I was left behind. And I said, oh, okay, God, well... What, what does this mean? And then I was like, well, you know, it's okay. Like, maybe this is just a part of my testimony and I'm going to be able to help somebody else, you know? And eventually I kind of was able to overcome um, some of that difficulty and that embarrassment and that shame that I had felt from not passing the first time. And then I took it the second time in February. So a couple months later, and I was like, okay, God, we're, we're going to do this thing. We're in this thing. We're ready to go. Uh, we're ready to make this happen. I'm ready to become an attorney. Uh, this is going to work out uh, perfectly fine for me. And I took the bar exam again. And then I failed again. And I said, okay. I said, yeah, um, God, I don't know what you're doing. But is this a sign that I'm in the wrong spot? Is this a sign that I'm not doing 
what it is that you're asking me to do? Uh, is this a sign that I need to stop? That all of those professors who told me I wasn't good enough to become an attorney, that they were right and that, you know, this isn't my assignment. Um, and I began to doubt myself and I began to uh, feel very low and I began to doubt God and every word that had been spoken over my life about becoming a judge and my desire to become a judge eventually and, and, and wanting to become an attorney and passing the bar exam, all of those things, they just went directly out of my mind. And I said, that's not for me anymore. Um, the second time around that I was studying, I was opening my books to read and bursting into tears and closing them because I was so full of anxiety. I was so full of doubt and I was so full of fear. And I was just like, I can't do this. Um, and I said, okay, God, um, we're going to go for this again because I know that you said that I'm supposed to be an attorney. I know that you said this is what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. Um, so I'm going to try again. And I'm not going to lie. This last time that I took the bar exam, um, I was full of fear. I was full of anxiety. Um, all of my friends had kind of gone on before me. Um, I had lost a few relationships. Um, I, I, I felt alone. And I felt uh, like, yeah, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to fail again. And it's just going to not work out for me. Um, but I said, I'm going to take it again because this is what I want. But I doubted it. Uh, but I still continued to move, um, regardless as to whether or not. The, the thing about fear is, um, fear is a natural human emotion. So fear is bound to come. The issue with fear is whether or not you let it deter you or stop you from what God said was yours. God told me that being an attorney, that this law license, that this JD, that this doctorate, God told me that they were mine. And even though I was afraid and anxious and doubted myself, I still moved. And, and so I want to encourage you, if I can just push, a, push a, a point in there, if I can be like my bishop really quickly and say there's an interruption from the Holy Spirit and just encourage you that even though you have fear, that doesn't mean that you're a bad Christian or a bad person. Just don't let that fear stop you from continuing to do whatever it is that God instructed you to do. So if God told you to move forward and you failed before, or you've been afraid before, or you've been anxious before, that's okay. Just keep moving. Don't let it stop you. And so this last time that I took the exam, um, I was scared, I was anxious, and I was nervous. Uh, all of those things. And... Um, Finally, I got my results back and I said, okay, Lord, uh, I was, honestly, I was anticipating failing again, if I can be honest. Um, I was just like, I don't really know how this is going to go and I passed. And I sat back in my seat and I was like, God did. God really did this for me. Now, what does that have to do with the story of Noah and obedience and while I'm waiting, be, be obedient? What does that, what does that mean? I will be honest with you. The second time that I took the exam, I laid on my face and I asked God, how do I study for this? How do I take this exam? How am I supposed to overcome this thing? Because God, you know, God had given me specific instructions as to what to do to overcome this exam. Now, when they give you your preparation materials, your study materials for the bar exam, they give you a schedule. They give you. The people who have done the research, who have the statistics, who have all the information, who have all the knowledge, who've been doing this program for years, they give you a schedule and they tell you how this is supposed to go. I asked God, I said, what, are, what do I need to do to pass this thing? Because only you know, God. God said, I want you to do this, 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 and this. Now, the instructions I got from God weren't the same as the instructions I had gotten from the program that has been established for years, that has 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 been doing this, has has been helping people pass this exam for years. It was completely different from those instructions. And so, if I can be honest with you, there were some parts that I was obedient to. I said, okay, Lord, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. And there was one instruction that I remember so clearly. And I was like, God, I don't think I got enough time to do this. What you're asking me, this last instruction you're giving me, it's not on their schedule. The people who administer the bar don't suggest this. They don't tell you to do this. They don't say that this is what the path that you need to walk down. 
And this just seems like it's going to take a lot of time. And I don't know if I'm going to be prepared for the exam because they're telling me that I have to do this, 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 and this. And God, you're saying this. So God, I'm going to do these parts. But I'm going to go ahead and listen to these people who've been in this business long enough and who know how this program is supposed to go. I'm going to I'm going to finish out the last part of my studying with what they said with their schedule. This was in February and I didn't pass that exam. And I came out of that exam and all I could think about was the last instruction that God had given me. So this last time that I took it. I got on my knees and I repented and I said, Lord, I apologize because I was not obedient completely to all of the instructions that you had given me because I felt like I knew better or the people who had been administering this exam for so long may have known better as to what would help me achieve success. But God, I'm here. I'm, I'm ready to listen. I apologize. I'm going to be obedient to the fullest capacity and to the fullest potential. So I sat there and God had reminded me of the last instruction that he gave me. And I was so hesitant because I was like, Lord, this is a lot of work. And it seems and feels like unnecessary work. It seems and feels like this is just going to be a waste of time. And I need to make sure I get this material down pat. And all of my friends are saying that they're studying this way. And all of my, you know, peers are saying that this is how they're, you know, trying to approach the exam. And, and, and these, this, these statistics over here say that people are 90% more successful if they do this, 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 and this. But I said, okay, God, I'm going to quiet the noise, forget about my surroundings, who's doing what, and I'm just going to obey you. And I spent those months... Doing exactly what it was that God was asking me to do. Now, the amount of work that it was, it was an overwhelming amount of work. It was, it was trying. It was difficult. It was hard. I was tired. All of that. But I said, okay, God, I'm going to do what you asked me to do. And I completed the assignment that God asked me to do. And I believed with everything in me. That the only reason that I was successful this time is because I was obedient. I don't think it had anything to do with academics. I don't think it had anything to do with being smart enough or being good enough. I think it had every, I believe with my heart, I know it had everything to do with being obedient. A lot of times we try to take situations into our own hands and do things out of our own power when God is just asking us to be obedient. He didn't ask me to look at statistics. He didn't ask me to look at everybody else's situation. He didn't ask me to follow down anybody else's path. He just told me, you do what I asked you to do. And that's where I was successful. And so in the same regard, this is what happened with Noah. The only reason that his family was saved was because of his obedience. Now, he could have built, would have, instead of building an ark, Noah spent the next however many years building the, the most fantastic barricade and, and bunker that he had ever, that anyone in the world had ever seen? What if he had used his resources and his talents to set his family up because he knew destruction was coming, to set his family up in a bunker? And he said, instead of building an ark, I'm just going to build this and, and we're going to be able to withstand the flood. He would not have been successful because that's not what God had asked him to do. It has nothing to do with the structure. It has everything to do with his obedience. And so... During this pandemic, uh, after coming out of the bar exam and becoming licensed and getting sworn in and all that stuff, um, I began to think about the future. And I said, now, God, you promised me that I was going to be here. And I, I'm grateful for this moment and this experience to, to be in a position like this in a family that we don't have any attorneys. You know, a lot of my family didn't even go to college. So this was an, an, a, a presumably impossible and unbelievable, you know, dream that you made come to pass by your grace and your mercy. Um, but God, you made some other promises to me as well. And we're in the middle of a pandemic. You told me I was going to be a lawyer. I'm here. Now, you also said I was going to do this. God, you also said I was going to do this. You said this was going to come to pass for me, and you said this was going to come to pass for me. How was that going to happen when the economy is like it is, the unemployment rate is like it is, the world is going in the direction it's going? How is this going to happen? God is not asking you to figure out the how. 
All he's asking you to do is while you are waiting on your next instruction, on your next move, on your next blessing, on whatever it is that God wants to do in your life, while you are waiting on next, keep obeying. Notice in the scripture, the Bible does not say that God came and spoke to Noah every day and gave him the same instructions as to how high, how wide, how tall, uh, how many animals, how many floors, how many levels, how many windows are we supposed to have. God gave one instruction and Noah built the ark. We don't know how long it took. Let's say it took 50 years. Noah took the next 50 years to build an ark off of one instruction. A lot of us, we get going on the instructions that God has given us. And then because it's taken longer than what we anticipated, you know, if it, 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 the, the process is going a little bit slower than we thought it was, you know, we begin to doubt and we begin to take things into our own hands and we leave the instruction God gave us and then we seek a new one or we just start moving. And then we're like, I have no idea what God is saying. What was the last thing he told you? What was the last thing that God said to you? Did you complete that task? You can't run before you walk. We get tired of walking and we want to run so bad that we try and then we end up falling. So a lot of us, God is telling us now, we need to go back to the original instruction that he gave us. Be just because the circumstances have changed, the world has changed, you know, we're, we're in quarantine, we're in lockdown, you're at home now instead of being in the office. That doesn't necessarily mean that God's instruction as to what he wants you to do right now has shifted. A lot of us have been seeking new instructions and God is saying, you still haven't done what I asked you to do in February. Yes, the world is shut down. I'm still God, though. So I would encourage you, saints, don't move off of the last instruction that God gave you just because the circumstance has shifted around us. Yes, we're in pandemic. God told you to write a book in February. You're at home now and you think God is saying something else and you still haven't done the first instruction. God told you he wanted you to go, to fast, go on a fast months ago. But you're seeking a new instruction and God is trying to speak to you. But you still haven't done what he asked you to do. I could not come into this next phase, this next level of my life until I had a full understanding of the principle of obedience. It has nothing to do with capability. Our bishop tells us all the time, make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do and not just what you can do. I could have studied differently. I could have done what statistics said was going to make me successful. I could have followed in my friend's footsteps, but that's not what God was calling for. I finally did what I was supposed to do, and that's when I began to reap. God has been calling you to write a business plan but you're writing sermons. There's nothing wrong with writing sermons. There's nothing bad with writing sermons. But you haven't done the instruction that God gave you. God has given us instructions just like Noah. He's told you how high, how wide, how tall, how many windows, how many stories, and how long. But we haven't been obedient to the last instruction. Now what we don't want to do is Come out of pandemic, because I do believe that there is an after this. There is an end to this. What we don't want to do is come out of pandemic, come out of quarantine, come out of the end of this situation, having not obeyed, and the flood comes, and we have no ark. What we don't want to do is put ourselves into a position where we have not obeyed the last instruction. We've done everything else that we thought was going to prepare us for success, that we thought was going to help us be in a better position. We've done nothing that God asked us to. And now we look up and the flood waters begin to rise and we have no ark. All we have is what we built and it's not able to sustain. God knew how long the flood was going to last. God knew how long the waters were going to stay risen. Because we talk about it rained 40 days and 40 nights, but we forget that he had to be on the ark until the water went down. We don't know how long that was. So God knew what type of vessel was sustainable enough to keep Noah and his family afloat during that time. The instruction God gives you may not make sense. 
I will tell you this. The instruction that God gave me as to how to study for the bar exam, it was amazing. To me, it didn't make sense. To me, I'm not going to lie to you. I thought it was a waste of time. I was like, Lord, I'm going to do all this reading. I'm going to do all this stuff. I'm going to do all this preparing. And I'm going to get nowhere. And this isn't going to help me at all. And I'm going to be less prepared when I come to the exam. If I had not done the instruction, when I got to the test, I understood why God told me to do what he told me to do. When I was sitting there, it did not make sense until the test came. As soon as the test came, I said, oh, God, this is why you had me read this. God, this is why you had me write this this way. God, this is why you wanted me to do my notes like this. I was able to go through the exam because I had the proper preparation. Not because I thought of the schedule and the preparation myself, but because I obeyed God. So heed the word of the Lord. Don't be concerned with the fact that we're in pandemic right now. The promises of God are yea and amen. And like it says in Habakkuk 2 and 3, the vision is yet for an appointed time. And though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. God did not tell you where you would be in the next couple of years, what you would be able to experience, the money that you would have, the debt you wouldn't have, the educational degrees you would have, all these different blessings. God would not speak those things over you just to have a pandemic come and his word not come to pass. They're coming to pass. What God promised, it is coming forward. But now you have to make sure that you are in the proper position and you are properly prepared for what is to come. And that requires you to be obedient. So saints, while you are waiting for next, while you are waiting for your blessing, for, for all of those promises and all of those good things, stay obedient. Well, I don't know what God is saying. What was the last thing he told you? Well, that was a while ago. Did you do it? <laughs> if the answer is no, go back to the last instruction he gave you. Because you can't get to two before you pass one. So get back to obedience. Get back to that last instruction. Get on your face. Ask God. Reveal to me, again, what it is I need to be doing. And don't be discouraged if the instruction that he gives you is different than what he gave somebody else. Or if it doesn't make sense. It will make sense in due time. But you have to trust in the Lord that he knows what is best for you. I had to sit back and say, God, I don't know what this is going to look like for me. But I trust your instruction. So I'm going to continue to do what, in, what it is that you told me to do. And I was able to be successful just because I was obedient. Not because of I, I was good enough or smart enough or nothing. Because I was obedient. That's, that's the, because I was obedient, God bless me. So I would encourage you, saints, go back to that last instru instruction. Be rest assured that the vision, it will surely come. God's word will come to pass for your life. You just have to get back to obedience. I pray that you can be encouraged by something that I said, by my own testimony. Um, I pray that you go back to those instructions, no matter how silly they seem, no matter who doesn't believe them, no matter who doubts what it is that you feel God is saying in your spirit. You know when God is speaking to you. No matter who says, God don't do that. God don't move like that. God don't go this way. God don't go that way. God don't give instructions to help anybody pass a bar exam. Yes, he does. <laughs> yes, he does. I'm a witness. God doesn't give people instructions for, for money-making ideas and new business ventures. Yes, he does. <laughs> I'm a witness. You know, so don't, don't, don't be ashamed and disgruntled. Uh, concerning the instruction that God gave you. It may not make sense now, but it will make sense later. Continue to be obedient. Be steadfast. Be okay with walking this thing out by yourself. Be okay with following these instructions alone. Because I went through a period of loneliness. 
I was very tired. I felt very much by myself. The friends that I had, they were gone. The support that I thought I had, it was gone. <laughs> uh, the people who said they would never, you know, leave me alone, they'd be right there by me, they were gone. <laughs> I felt very alone. I had God and his word to keep me during that time. And that was all I needed. That was all I needed. And that's all you need. So I pray that you will continue on, that God will put blinders on your eyes so you wouldn't be able to look to the left or to the right or who's doing what or who says what or what statistics say or, or, or what other people think. But you will just be able to keep your eyes on God and his word and watch him do exactly what he said he would do because it's coming. But while you're waiting, keep obeying. I love you. I'm praying with you. I'm praying for you and your family. Stay safe. Uh, God bless you. Keep your ear to God's lips because he's speaking. Uh, and stay encouraged. It will get better. And his word hasn't fallen to the ground yet. So those promises, you can still expect them. And it doesn't matter what the world is saying. You can still expect him to make good on his promises towards you. So be encouraged today. Be encouraged today, family. I love you. God bless you. And I hope you have a fantastic evening. God bless you all.